Coming up on the Merge Out Loud, Ed Kowalczyk is in the Merge Studios with Tower. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the Merge Out Loud. My name is Tower, Ed Kowalczyk. Very cool to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me. Um, I actually want to start really early with you. Um, you're one of those guys that's basically had one job your entire life. Yeah. Uh, you started playing music in junior high, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, started to, uh, yeah, guys got together around 13 or 14 in eighth grade, going into high school. Got a record deal right out of high school a couple years after we graduated, about a year and a half. And um, so, yeah, I've been putting out records and touring since uh, 1991. So did you ever think, like, back then when you first got a record deal, did you ever have a plan B, like, I'm going to go be an accountant, I'm going to, no? No, I was going to go to college and, you know, had some scholarships, had that all lined up and decided to defer for a year, try to get a record deal, <laughs> defer for another year. And so I'm in, I, I, I don't know, I don't think I'm still deferred. I don't think those scholarships are going to work anymore. <laughs> Um, we've got a lot to cover uh, in your career and that you're one of the um, few artists ever that sold 20 million plus records um, and really you started out as a, a, a band of high school friends this worked yeah. um, your first album was about Eastern mysticism sure and then we're on a Christian show now so we're gonna get a little right. more into that yeah. later um, but just tell me about I guess the last couple years of your life that you were in a band now you're a solo guy um, and just kind of that transition. Yeah, I, well, I'm, you know, a couple years ago, I definitely came to a, sort of an end of chapter moment in my life where I felt like, okay, you know, I'm, I kind of, I, I kind of lost my inspiration. You know, lost my passion for it, and it kind of freaked me out. Cause I've always been a really, you know, prolific writer and and loved what I do, and I felt like I was going through the motions. You know, just needed a change, needed to, uh, some kind of growth needed to happen. And um, so I, I started to entertain the idea of doing a solo career, making a, a record as a solo artist, and. And um, as soon as I started to kind of entertain like you know that, I, I got really excited. And um, really, then you know, every day was like this new sort of revelation of like these synchronicities and resources and people came into my life, like the guys I met down in Austin um, that played on the record, um, to just tons of inspiration. And um, basically, it was like being 19 again, right? Yeah, like, it was oh so goodness. much fun. I mean, I fell in love with the whole process again in a major way. And that took me all the way, you know, to late, late last year. I went to Austin, Texas. I mentioned and. Um, and yeah, and recorded the record. Um, ended up collaborating with this amazing um, co-producer and writer named uh, Greg Wattenberg for the song "Single Grace" and a song called "Stand." So that kind of came out of nowhere and was really fun. And um, yeah, we just started the world tour for this solo record, Alive, um, two, three weeks ago in Europe, and now we're in the States. And it's uh, really cool because this happens a lot with American bands, where you really become like a thing in Europe, and it takes the U.S. like three or four years to get it after that. And so we're going to see here in just a minute is actually a European festival, right? Yeah, this is the Bavarian Open Air Festival we did um, as a headliner um, a couple weeks ago in Holland. And people are singing along in the video. Do, do you think they're actually like speak English or they just kind of oh, sing because they like it? Oh, the Dutch are pretty, uh, yeah, they have a major English speaking um, vibe there because it's a very international country. So if it's not their first, it's their closest close second language so yeah it's pretty the lyric there's always had a, a pretty good reception and and um, they actually really get into it I think it, because it's their second language they they kind of think about it in a different way you know yeah. a little bit yeah, different and it's cool so if you want to go ahead and set the uh, the song in the video up for us the European festival it's called selling the drama yeah this is an oldie but a goodie from yeah. live yeah. and I mean these are all your songs but some of them were with a band and some of them were yeah on exactly your own. this is just performing them um, with uh, the solo band which was the, the whole show is about 50 50 I do like all the classics of my work in live and and of course about nine or ten from the new record. In just 30 seconds, I mean, this is one of the songs that literally had to change your life because it's been such a huge hit. Just kind of where did it come from? Where was the inspiration? Yeah, it was, um, it was a song went to college radio. I'll never forget it. You know, it's like we kind of felt like, wow, if it, if it goes, you know, to college radio and we get a hit at college, you know, we'll be so happy. And then it was like, you know, ended up being just the beginning of this whole trip that, um, you know, Throwing Copper went on and songs, of course, like I Alone and Lightning Crashes and and um, yeah, so it was really this sort of you know quiet, kind of subtle beginning that that kind of you know really ended up like you said changed our lives. With Ed Kowalczyk on the Merge Out Loud, the song is selling the drama. Check out the video live in Holland. Into love, a god, into fear, a flame, into burn.
Hey, coming up on The Merge Out Loud, more with Ed Kowalczyk. We're going to talk about what it's like to have sold 20 million records and then start completely over as a solo artist. It's coming up on The Merge Out Loud. It's The Merge Out Loud with Ed Kowalczyk. Um, now, two years ago, you're talking about this transition into from the band live into a solo career. Uh, and that's really a weird dynamic because you've sold uh, 20 million records, which uh, very few artists ever have attained that kind of success. You walk away from that and you kind of go back to being like I was saying, a 19 year old guy with a guitar a few years later. Uh, but you don't really get to just be like a 19 year old guy with a guitar because you're Ed from live. Right. Yeah. So, what was that like? I mean, you got to go through some insecurity there, right? Of uh, what if this doesn't work? Well, I, yeah. Sure. I mean, I dealt with that in a funny way. I actually did, um, grabbed an acoustic guitar and went out and did, um, you know, full on just me and an acoustic guitar show for an hour and a half. Um, I'd never done it. I'd done a bunch of it, you know, promoting records, and of course I write like that, but I never did full concerts. And so I, I kind of <laughs> took the insecurity and took it even further to possibly, you know, like this place where I'd never gone before, and you're standing up on stage and it's your, you're the, the whole thing, you know, and what's, you know, the capacities and talents that come out of that or need to emerge, they thankfully did. And um, I actually really fell in love with that. And so um, that was, yeah, it was kind of a way I dealt with it. I kind of, you know what, this, let's just really go back to basics and um, do something new at the same time. And I created a kind of, or rediscovered rather, a kind of intimacy with the lyric and with um, my fans that was really like going back to even prior to the beginning because, you know, um, as soon as you, you write songs and they become these big band things and the next thing you know, the, the PA's rocking and all the production's going and that guy who actually sat in his bedroom and came up with this idea, he kind of gets, you kind of forget about him. Well, this was a way of bringing him out also, um, letting people see that part of what, the, what I do in the process. And um, I was writing as well during that. So it was really inspirational for the lyric, too, because I was in this direct, almost dialogue kind of environment with people. It was really cool. Um, and I actually want to go into the sound here, because you know there are bands that hang around for, uh, you said you've been doing it since 1991, so you've got almost 20 years under your belt. Most bands that are still doing that, uh, yeah, they exist, but basically they're on the county fair circuit sure. or, you know, they're kind of playing in the summer. People hear three old songs they used to hear on the radio. And right. Nothing new or relevant is really happening. You're one of the very few that has continued to make relevant music for uh, two decades now and stay in the forefront of that. Um, and also, you, you've got people like Daughtry who say, okay, my career is basically based on this dude yes. right here. Um, did you know that that was happening? Or kind of when you look back at that and you're like, you know, I was one of the people that helped create a rock sound that's still going on right now. Well, I think, you know, um, what feels great to hear that stuff. Um, I don't think you can, you can never imagine that's going to be the way your music's received over time, but um, it's great. Uh, you know, I, I think just taking that sort of left of center kind of approach to, to music, going out, you know, 
of course, I, I love U2, and I love the early REM records, and I went, and I, I always wanted to make music that people could think about as well as move them, you know, in their hearts and emotions. And so I, I think just taking that approach really um, has weathered well. You know, um, of course, the bands that I'm mentioning are, are legendary, too. So it's kind of like, you know, the, it, it just, when you keep, when you keep that kind of universal aspect, but you're also giving people something they can really sink their teeth into and grow with, um, it, it, it has served uh, to keep it in people's hearts and minds this long. A uh, new solo record is called Alive. We're going to go ahead and check out a song here in a second called Zion. Yeah. Uh, is this, are these the ones that at this point in your life are the most close to your heart? Because you, yes. you took the biggest risk on these, right? Yes. I definitely, um, you know, this, this record is a, the story in my own way of my faith and, and my um, sort of reconversion to Christianity and, um, and faith in Jesus. And so there's lots of, um, you know, biblical metaphors and that kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm pulling from all these places that are in my heart and, and I have grew up with, but now are like, you know, way more out on the front, like, of course, Zion. Yeah, just real quickly set up where the song came from, what it's about. Yeah, this one was one I was, you know, I got really into, um, you know, sort of, well, this was happening in my life spiritually, so I was like, well, I want to put this in a record. How do I do that? And I, so I went back to basics. I found Blind Willie Johnson and the guitar evangelist, and I also listened to, like, you know, Bob Dylan's gospel record, which nobody likes, I guess, but me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it's awesome. And um, so I went back and did that, and I, I started this sort of blues kind of like, mm -hmm. so I just wanted it to have that feel. And of course, Zion being a metaphor for, you know, um, the holy place and heaven and, and um, where we go in prayer and, and um, inspirational and all that. So hopefully it's all in the song. We're with Ed Kowalczyk right now. The song is Zion. Check out the video for it right now. It's the Merge Out Loud. Sing along with this melody. Here we go.
Hey, coming up, more with Ed Kowalczyk on his faith on the Merge Out Loud. It's the Merge Out Loud with Ed Kowalczyk right now. Uh, the band Live was uh, officially together for, what, about 16 years? It was closer to 20, actually. Closer to 19, 20 years. Yeah. Uh, the first album uh, that came out was actually all about Eastern mysticism. You're here now uh, to talk about your faith in Jesus a little bit more. Uh, those are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. You know, tell me just kind of what happened in your life from um, when you're writing songs and believing that this thing is the truth to yeah. arriving uh, to this song, Grace, which we're going to do in just a minute here. Sure. Well, like you said, I mean, I've always had a, an interest in, you know, spirituality um, and, uh, you know, scriptures, from all over the world, and I've always been an avid reader, and um, started that kind of, uh, you know, search in my life probably right after I, I graduated from high school. I was also, I mean, I was born and baptized and raised a Christian, so, you know, I, but I kind of shelved it. I kind of went into a, a place in my life where I wanted to see and question and all that, and um, it took me on, you know, my own sort of, you know, odyssey into you know, all that, and, and uh, like you mentioned, you know, my, Krishnamurti and, and Eastern mysticism and sitting with Zen Buddhists and all that. And, um, and then just recently, the last few years, I, I, um, there was just a moment where I, I just fell in love with Jesus Christ. I fell, um, I have a, this um, really beautiful Byzantine um, crucifix icon, this art piece that hangs on my wall. And um, it was just about a year ago, I, I just, it struck me, you know, I just believed. And so at that point, um, of course, the music started to really flow and the direction for what I, you know, what I wanted it to be and what I wanted it to express became very, very palpable and you have a live now. And I think that uh, a lot of people would ask the question as you've gone along here, I mean, the first album was very Eastern. Uh, by the time you guys had really taken a step to, uh, I, I guess what we call like a world-class artist or somebody that's known around the world, uh, there was a lot of uh, just content in the lyrics that, that could have been kind of translated towards Christianity. Sure, you know? sure, yeah. Well, one of my favorite quotes um, that I read recently was that all search for truth is search for Christ. And, and um, I think that essentially when, um, at least for me personally, you know, as I was going through, you know, um, the, the seeking that I was doing, you know, essentially I was seeking God. I was seeking the truth. And um, the fullness of it is in Jesus Christ. And that's what, like I mentioned a year ago, really kind of hit me, you know. And that, I call it a reconversion just because I was, I was kind of, you know, raised that way but it was just kind of buried or kind of, you know, of my past, so. And you really got started reading the Bible again, which is where Absolutely. this came from. Absolutely. That, you know, what, and what, what, did you just wake up one morning and you're like, hey, I want to read the Bible? Yeah, it, well, it was around that time, you know, and it was, you know, it was funny because the Bible was a book that, you know, I, I had much love and appreciation and honor for, but I, I didn't, it didn't make that much sense to me and, um, in, in terms of what I was reading and everything else. And so after this experience, it was as if, you know, it was a whole new language and, I was understanding it and, and having um, the blessings that were coming through it, you know, were much more sort of profound. And this is, uh, the song we're going into is obviously one of the ones that really sums you up at this point. It's called Grace, yeah. shot in uh, Belgium? Leuven, Belgium, yeah. Leuven, Belgium. Uh, just real quick, set up the song, uh, just where it came from in your life, and if you just want to tell us something about the video, too. Yeah, well, Grace, it really is great because it encapsulates, like you said, where I'm at. Um, also, the, I, I feel like it, it kind of touches a new depth of emotion and, and urgency in my vocal. And that, to me, is saying a lot because everybody's kind of always appreciated that about my delivery, and this is, I think, even even more so. So um, that's what I'm hearing from the fans, which is great. Uh, yeah, shot in Leuven, Belgium. The song itself um, was uh, inspired kind of indirectly by all these images that were coming over the airways around um, the time of the Haitian earthquake. There were a few images that really struck me as, you know, this incredible, you know, of course, this tragedy, but then there's this sort of like white light kind of around like these moments of deep charity and, and a rescue or, or something. It was just a few, few things that really struck me. I thought, how can I put that into a song, what I'm feeling right now? Because, you know, what, th that I'm peering through this and seeing this is a kind of grace because, you know, um, you know, I'm not sure, you know, you definitely have the two worldviews where say, oh, this is just horrible and that's it. Well, yes, but there's also this deep love coming through and this deep charity. So I wanted to 
take those two worldviews, smash them together, and put them in a song and try to make sense out of it. And, and it became I, a music video. It became Grace. Ed Kowalczyk on the Merge Out Loud. This is called Grace. Check it out. Spend a little time standing on the front lines And you really can't talk it all Your mind begins to wonder Is there any love at all? The photographs you took, yeah, there was something in their eyes Every saint used to be a sinner Every man used to be a child You said Hi, I'm Ed Kowalczyk, and you're watching The Merge Out Loud. Coming up on The Merge Out Loud with Ed Kowalczyk, we talk about his work with relief organization World Vision. It's The Merge Out Loud. My name is Tower. We're with Ed Kowalczyk right now. Uh, you have been working at least for the last year with relief organization World Vision. Uh, it's an organization that I've uh, done some fundraising for through athletic activities and just something that's really near and dear to my heart. Just tell me... Like, how'd you get plugged in there? Well, first off, I read The Hole in Our Gospel first, and that was, you know, turned me on to World Vision itself, and I started to sponsor kids right away. Um, it just really hit me hard. And so as that, it kind of grew organically out of that, because I found their website, saw this incredible artist affiliate program they have, and I thought, wow, I'm going on tour. Let, I want to do that, you know. So um, made some calls, and now they're on tour with us, guy, a great guy named Jeffrey. He sets up a table every night. Of course, we... You know, I, I make an appeal from stage, and um, we get we get kids sponsored. We have 24 so far on this tour um, that have been sponsored. That's uh, which is amazing in itself. Uh, in that I mean, as, as much as you've done with music, that uh, that you've connected 24 kids with people who are uh, yeah, going to give them food and, and education is it's an incredible feeling, and um, it's it's just they're they're a great organization, and they they're like I said, their artist programs really really um, just well thought out, and it's it's really unique. 
Yeah, when Flyleaf was on here, they're also a World Vision band, and it's cool to talk to those guys about it. Do you ever get worried that maybe people are going to think this is just like a vanity thing for you? That, oh, you know, every celebrity's got their charity, and that um, people won't really Not get really, it because, now. you know, it, it, it is so near and dear to me, and I, I, I think part of my appeal and part of how I do it in the show is really, um, I, th I think it really shows how authentic it is. And, and um, so, you know, it, it's, it's a great thing because my music, anyway, kind of has always tried to have a, a community effect in that moment, you know, and try to bring people together with it. So this just kind of deepens that and takes it outside the venue and, and into, uh, into the lives of children that, that really need help. Um, I want to talk about just kind of what happens next. The record's called Alive. It's been out for uh, several Since months July. now. Yeah. yeah, several months now. Um, you're playing uh, club tours, basically, which is cool because you're like an up-and-coming artist again. Mm -hmm. um, well, kind of what happens, or what, what do you hope happens in the next year, next two years, uh, as you start in this new phase of your career? You know, it's interesting. I um, have had so many amazing experiences. I'm so blessed in, in to have, the, you know, the life that I've led. Um, that ev every day I'm, I'm so fulfilled at every level now. You mentioned world, our world vision um, connection and just um, just spiritually and at every level I, I feel that I've, I've, you know, I can't imagine what I'd add to it. So I'm just going to continue to kind of just enjoy the ride because um, that being said, I'll, I'll, I'm sure we're going to tour into um, next year uh, and, and get to the West Coast, which we haven't done yet. Of course, we're going to Australia and New Zealand later in the year. And um, just continue. I feel like I'm at the tip of the iceberg with um, all these things, and there's, I'm just having more fun than ever. And you've been writing songs uh, since you were high school. Uh, in high school, do you just continually write, or are you just really focusing on getting these songs out there? And, One of the you know, casualties of the road for me is that I, I just have to be at home to write music. I just, I've tried it on the road, and it's just like, okay, I can't do this. So, yeah. You know, um, people think like the whole bus life is so luxurious, and it's really awful. It, it's, it, it can, yeah, I mean, sleeping on a bed that moves is sort of like, you know, okay, now how am I supposed to write? You know, I'm so tired. You know, um, but no, it's, um, I'm hoping to get back in the studio um, towards the end of this year, November, December, and just continue to write. Because, yeah, I, I mean, it is the, you know, one of the deeper parts of my passion. Ed Kowalczyk, it's been awesome to have you on the show. Pleasure. I'd love to get you back in in a year or so and just talk about where you are. Absolutely. The record is called Alive, if you want to check that out. This is The Merge Out Loud. Is there any